guys, we're going to go ahead and get started on this dishcloth. I'm going to be using the same yarn that is recommended in the pattern, which is Pima by Originally Lovely Yarn. I am obsessed with this new cotton, and I have linked it down below if you want to try it out for yourself. Um, I absolutely love the way that it works up for this dishcloth as well, so I'm definitely excited to use it again for the second version. I'm going to be using these two colors, um, this really pretty kind of grayish blue color, which is called Stone, and then this really deep teal called Ocean, and then I'm going to be using Powder, I believe it's called, for my border color. So go ahead and grab your yarn. You can use this yarn or any other other DK cotton yarn that you prefer. I have the other materials that I'm going to be using down in the description box as well as the free and paid versions of the pattern linked. So definitely check out all of those resources. Now we're going to go ahead and prepare our yarn. I'm going to take off these labels and then we will start our dishcloth. Alrighty, we're going to go ahead and get started with our main color. We're going to use this for the foundation chain and the first few rows. We're going to start off with a slip knot, so just make a loop with your yarn like so. Reach in, grab the working yarn, and pull it up, and then place that on our hook and pull both ends to secure. We're going to start off with a foundation chain of 29 stitches. If you would like to make this dishcloth um, wider or narrower, you can simply chain in multiples of 4 plus 1. So for this version and for the um, way that it's written in the pattern, I'm going to chain 29 stitches. <music> Alrighty, and there is my foundation chain. For row one, we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So I'm going to skip this very first chain, work into the second one, and work a single crochet. And then I'm going to do that in every single chain across until I get to the very end of my work. Just single crochet in each and every chain. Okay, there is row two, or row one, excuse me. I know this color is a little bit dark, so it's kind of hard to see each individual stitch in the camera, and I apologize for that, but it's going to get a lot better once I use that lighter contrast color in just a round or so. Okay, so I have finished row one. I'm going to go ahead and go on with row two. We're going to chain one in turn, and then just single crochet in each stitch across again. So we are really just kind of laying the foundation or where we will place our double crochet spike stitches when we start our repeat in the next round. Oh, whoa, excuse me. So I'm just going to single crochet in each stitch across, and then I will meet you back here for row three. Okay, I finished row two. I'm at my very last stitch, and on this last stitch, I'm going to join my contrast color. So I'm just going to insert my hook into the last stitch, pull up the loop, and then before we finish that single crochet, I'm going to yarn over with my contrast color and pull through. And so now I have switched to this contrast color now. Um, really simple, and if you're new to switching colors in crochet, you will definitely get the hang of it really quick with this pattern. Okay, so now we are going to start our repeat. It is a four row repeat, um, and we're going to work it for the rest of the dishcloth, and it will be rows three through six. So we're going to go ahead and start with row three. We're going to chain one and turn. Now we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Again, we're using our contrast color. And then we're going to work two spike double crochet stitches. So what we're going to be doing is working in the base of the stitches from the previous row. So if you look closely right here, you can see here is where we worked a single crochet. And here is where we work to single crochet. And those stitches are going to be what we work into right now. So I'm going to yarn over insert my hook into that stitch, pull up a loop, and you want to kind of pull it up a little bit further than you usually would. A goal here is to kind of elongate that stitch, not shrink it down to be, um, you know, right up next to the fabric. So I just gave it a little tiny tug, and now I'm going to yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over and pull through two, just like that. And then we're going to do that same thing again, yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, over pull through two yarn over and pull through two and we can kind of see here 
how those do double crochet stitches are, you know, the standard height of a double crochet. But if we were to kind of stretch it out a little bit, you want this to be almost perfectly straight. Um, our next row, spoiler, is going to be single crochet. So that's kind of going to even out a little bit of the tension that you see here. Um, but it will result in a perfectly square dishcloth. Um, and it just kind of kind of goes along with the entire stitch pattern. So don't put too much thought into it. Um, just kind of relax and have fun with this stitch. I have really, really enjoyed it. Okay, so, and that's going to be our repeat. So again, single crochet in the next two stitches. And then double crochet spike stitches in the next two. So we're going to work below those next two stitches. Do a double crochet. And then into that next stitch and do a double crochet as well. And once we get to the next couple of rows, I'm going to be doing this same exact thing, but in this light blue color. And I think you're going to be able to see the stitches a little bit better. Um, but you can definitely kind of pick up a rhythm with it once you get going. It's really not a complicated stitch. It's just unique and perhaps a little bit unusual if, you know, you're a more beginner crocheter. Um, but I hope that you decide to still give it a go. And note that I am also working around these stitches. So when I insert my hook... Let me work these next two stitches here. I'm inserting my hook into the base of that, and then I'm pulling my yarn to the back and working a standard double crochet. So that stitch, we're skipping it, but it kind of looks like it's been worked into, um, if that makes any sense. And there we go. Almost to the end here. I'm going to work it a couple more times. Two spike stitches, two single crochet stitches. And then we're going to finish off with our two spike stitches. So work into that second to last stitch. And then into that very last stitch. This one can be a little bit hard to see, but it's right here. Just try to place it and then yarn over so that that doesn't slip off the edge there. There we go. So you still want to be able to see, you know, that nice blue last single crochet stitch from your previous row. Um, you want to be able to see that. Okay, so there is our completed row with the spike stitches and now we're going to proceed to row four we're just going to chain one and turn and then single crochet in each stitch across that's it so it's really simple kind of nice to have a break um you will be working a single crochet row every other row so you know you get that little you get that little breather every other row which is really nice i think um again just single crochet in each stitch across when we get to the very last stitch, we are going to switch colors. So we switch colors every two round rows. <laughs> Excuse me again. Every two rows in this pattern. Um, I do recommend just bringing your yarn up from the side. I don't recommend cutting it every single time unless you're making like a scrappy version or something. Um, if you are deciding to do that method, I recommend crocheting over your ends instead of having to weave all of them in at the same time at the end of the project. Okay, so I have two stitches left. I'm going to work in this last one. And then just like we did before, work the first half of this um, single crochet and then pull up your, work, oh, your, excuse me, your main color, your previous color, pull it up and then yarn over with that. And there we go. Now we have switched back to the main color. Perfect. So now we have worked the first two rows of our repeat. We're going to go ahead and work the last two rows now. So we're going to chain one and turn. And what we're going to do is offset these spike stitches. So we worked them here every two row, two stitches. And now we're going to place some stitches right here to kind of have that nice offset look, which I really like. So I'm going to chain one and turn. We're going to start off with two spike stitches again into that previous row. So here is that row of single crochet and double crochet stitches. Working into these single crochet stitches here. I'm going to work a spike stitch in the very first stitch. And then a spike stitch in the next stitch. And then work two single crochets along the next two stitches. And then repeat that. So double crochet spike in the single crochet stitches. And then two single crochet stitches in the next two. And we're going to repeat that all the way across. And that is all there is to it. So I'm going to keep working this row. And then I will meet you back here for row six <laughs> if i can count okay and here's what your dishcloth should be looking so far we just finished row five we're going to go ahead and go on to the last row of our repeat we're going to chain one and turn 
and then work a single crochet in each stitch across. And that's all there is to it. So you're going to repeat these four rows until you have worked um, a, the total of seven times. So I'm going to set this down. Again, this last row six is just a single crochet row again. Um, so really simple. Always good to have that breather. So I'm going to bring up my first sample here. So we're going to work the repeat a total of seven times. And a great way to count that is to start where our first contrast color came in. And we're just going to count those spikes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven full repeats. Um, so like I said, really simple. I hope that you are enjoying this pattern. I'm going to go work um, the... Um, rest of my repeats and then I will meet you back here to show you how to finish off and add this super fun border. Okay so I have worked my repeat a total of seven times and I am now ready to finish off with these two colors and switch to my border color that I have chosen which is this white right here. So I'm going to do exactly what I have done in the past in this very last stitch here. I'm going to work half of it just like this and then I'm going to yarn over with my border color and pull that through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut both of these working yarns that are attached to my main color and contrast color because I don't need them anymore. Um, and now you can either leave all three of these ends right here and weave them in later or you can crochet over them. And that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you how to do it. But, um, you know, typically you wouldn't do three ends at a time. There's a chance that it could affect your gauge a little bit. So do whatever you're most comfortable with. But um, I personally don't mind it. <laughs> I would rather not have to weave them in later. Um, so I'm going to do it this way. Okay. And we're also going to be crocheting around this entire uh, perimeter of the blanket. So it, it, it all works out in the end is my point, I guess. Okay, so before we hop into the border, we are going to chain one and turn. This is going to get us to the right side of our work so we can see that all of our double crochet stitches have the right sides showing and that is exactly what we want. So now I'm going to grab these three strands, kind of lay them over my work here, and then I'm just going to work over them as I start single crocheting. So I have chained one and I'm going to single crochet in this first stitch. I'm going through the stitch and then under all of those ends and then working a single crochet. And I'm just gonna do that for a few stitches to get those in secure. Um, again, we're just working one single crochet in each stitch across. And I'm gonna do, like I said, just a few more stitches with all of these ends. There we go. And then I'm just gonna let them go behind the work and then I will cut them you know, in just a minute. Okay, so I'm just gonna single crocheting, continue, excuse me, a single crocheting around my entire dishcloth. Once I get to the corner here, I'm going to work three single crochets into that um, just so it is nice and rounded and neat. And I'll be there in just a second. So again, I'm just working a single crochet in each stitch. I think the border would also look so good in like the main color of this um, dishcloth as well. So definitely don't feel pressure to use a completely separate color. Okay, I've gotten to the last stitch of my dishcloth here, of this very last row that I did on the top. I'm going to work three single crochets into that, again, just to round that nicely. And then I'm going to single, single crochet down the edge of my dishcloth. Um, so I'm just going to work roughly one single crochet per single crochet row, and then two single crochets in the double crochets. So this is a single crochet row, this is a single crochet row, this is double crochet. I'm going to work two stitches into that. Um, do whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. Do whatever kind of satisfies your gauge the best. The goal here is to allow your dishcloth to lay flat and be a perfect square when you are done. And so depending on your gauge, that might mean that you need to do more stitches than I'm doing or fewer. Um, again, just kind of pay attention to where you are in your work. You can kind of like lay it down on the table or wherever um, every now and then to kind of make sure it's all lying flat. But again, um, just kind of go with it. Let your hook do the work for you almost. So I am almost to the edge here. And like I said, I'm just going to repeat this all the way around. So I'm going to aim to place the same amount of stitches um, all around on each side. But again, I'm also not going to be counting. So <laughs> I'm just going to be doing it kind of 
you know, whatever I think looks good and I'm going to go with it. Um, I'm going to crochet over this tail at the base here just like I did before and then same with where I picked up my contrast color. And then I will meet you back here um, when we get back to this corner to finish off our dishcloth. <laughs> Alrighty, so I have worked around my entire dishcloth here and now I finished off with two single crochets in that last stitch, the same place where I worked the very first single crochet that we did. Again, just rounding off that corner. And now I'm going to slip stitch to the very first stitch, grab my scissors, and cut. And there we go. So now all you have to do is weave in any ends that you may have remaining, um, trim them nice and close so that they don't, they don't come undone, and there is our finished dishcloth. If you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable to follow along with, and I also hope that you love your finished object, be sure that I have included all of the links to the materials that I used, the materials that you'll need, and all of the links to the pattern in the description box below, um, as well as links to my other social media platforms and pattern shops. So just be sure to check all of that out if you are so desired to do so. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any future tutorials and then click that notification bell right beside it so that you get a little alert every time I post a new video. Thank you so, so much for watching and until next time, happy making. Bye.